hello and welcome to my channel. On today's video we are going to look at some of the most amazing and beautiful tiaras worn by queens and princess, in the realm of royalty, pageantry, and nobles. Throughout history, men and women of status have adorned their foreheads with various kind of crowns and tiaras, which symbolized social superiority and power. The fashion of wearing precious tiaras has fluctuated with history and gone in tandem with society's appetite for egalitarianism or elitism, but it has not vanished. The downfall of many European monarchies might have diminished its importance, but curiously, the notion of elitism and dream of being a princess, even for one day, has continued to seduce generations and tiara has remained in fashion, in its classical styles as well as in new art forms. Most royal watchers instantly recognized the glittering diadem as Queen Mary's lover's knot tiara, often shortened to the lover's knot. The lover's knot tiara was commissioned for Queen Mary in 1913 from Britain's House of Garrett. It consists of diamonds and a collection of 19 hanging pearls, all set in silver and gold. Later it was handed down to Queen Elizabeth. She then eventually gave it to her daughter-in-law, Princess Diana. It was through Diana that Love Is Not became one of the most recognizable pieces of jewelry belonging to the British royal family. She famously paired it with a white, pearl-encrusted Catherine Walker ensemble while visiting Hong Kong in 1989. Upon her divorce from Prince Charles, the tiara was returned to Queen Elizabeth as part of the divorce deal. Kate Middleton didn't wear the lover's knot tiara for the first few years of her royal tenure. On her wedding day, Kate Middleton wore the Cartier Halo tiara. Then, for other formal occasions, most notably at the state dinner for Chinese President Xi Jinping, she donned the lotus flower tiara. However, in December 2015, she wore the lover's knot for that year's diplomatic reception. Immediately, comparisons to Diana were made. Since then, it's become the Duchess's formal headwear of choice. Ninth on the list is the Marie Threes, Duchess d'Anguli Emerald and Diamond Tiara. The tiara which was designed and executed by the French royal jewelers Everard and Frederick Babst in 1819, was a masterpiece of the French jewelry craftsmanship of the early 19th century. The design of the tiara was a symmetrical design of scrolling foliage mounted with over a thousand diamonds set in silver, and forty emeralds set in gold. The silver and gold lines of the settings are clearly visible in the photograph of the tiara. The tiara survived the French Revolution and was hidden away together with other royal treasure, eventually the tiara was sold in an auction to an English aristocrat. It was on display at the Albert and Victoria Museums for several years until the owner of the celebrated tiara successfully negotiated a deal with the Louvre Museum, that brought him the returns he expected. Thus the emerald and diamond tiara of the Duchess d'Angoulême, Marie III's Charlotte, the only child of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette to survive the French Revolution, finally became the property of the Louvre Museum, where it is displayed today. Eighth on the list is the Lynn Aquamarine Tiara. A tiara that comes to us courtesy of the Belgian noble house of Lynn. The Lynn family have held their titles for centuries, but this tiara is a thoroughly modern addition to the extended family's jewel collection. In 2009, Prince Edouard de Lynn de la Tremoyle married Italian actress, Isabella Orsini. This beautiful diamond and aquamarine tiara was made for the occasion. The sparkler, which was created by Hullemans, features a large central aquamarine book ended by smaller aquamarines. And, because this is a lintiara after all, the piece also incorporates diamond script less as a major feature of the design. Isabella also wore aquamarine earrings, to coordinate with the diadem. The universal themes of nature, strength, beauty, femininity and unity. 
the Mwawad Miss Universe Tiara 2019 begun life like this, as inspiration. The designers was asked of crafting the extraordinary tiara embracing the values of the Miss Universe, and translate them to diamond studded crown, that represent, ambition, diversity, community, and beauty. This tiara came to life in a meticulous process, that combined the artistry and creative vision, using technology, master craftsmen, and the expertise to source and polish diamonds to the highest standard. The tiara's name The Power of Unity, is meant to celebrate a women for being complex, diverse, unapologetically ambition, and strong. The interconnected line motifs are, are meant to represent the community of women from around the world whose band unite them, and reminds us that we are stronger than apart. Sixth on the list, is this beautiful emerald tiara from the collection of Princess Katharina Henkel von Donsmark in the 1900. I think it is difficult to exaggerate the importance of this emeralds. This is the undoubtedly the greatest roar of original fabulous stones, 11 of them perfectly match. And what is extraordinary, is that, if you want to describe it to somebody, what color the great emerald is you would point at this stones. They are like green berries, it's what is known as the old mine material. The emeralds itself is absolutely remarkable, it is estimated the weight to be well over 500 carats, which is a huge amount. They would have been mine in Colombia, probably in the 16th century, and they would have been traded with India. The emeralds are typical of, a way of wearing emeralds, in India in the 17th century, cutting them in a way of almost rolled pebble bids, and characters will be drilled along the main axis, with this rather thick drill holes. So, one can easily imagine that this could worn around the neck by a Maharaja or a Prince. And then, subsequently finding its way into France in the turn of the 19th century. There's really no period in European history where jewelry was more glamorous and more abundant, than the better part of end of the 19th century. Prince Guido Henkel von Donsmark was at that time the richest man in German and one of the richest men in Europe. In 1887 he married a Russian aristocrat, Katharina Sleptsov, and this tiara was commissioned for her as a gift. Donsmark commissioned this tiara from Chormy. The design of the tiara, the base of the tiara is typical of the late 19th century. Very delicate garden forms set in diamonds and studded with this large cushion pale yellow diamond, which contrast perfectly with the emeralds. Fifth on the list is the Queen Alexandra's Kokoschnik tiara. There are so many reasons to love Queen Alexandra's Kokoschnik. It's an utterly classic tiara from a design perspective. It's a literal wall of diamonds. It has a fascinating, Romanov related backstory. The original design of the tiara was worn by Empress Marie Fodorovna of Russia. Then after it was seen by her sister Queen Alexandra, she already knew what she wanted on her wedding day. In 1888 the London News illustrated the Alexandra's anniversary present, a Kokoschnik design tiara made by the royal jeweler, the House of Garrett. Like Marie Fodorovna's tiara, the piece was made of individual paveset bars, though Alexandra's fringes were more rounded at the tip. Alexandra's Kokoschnik featured 77 of these fringe pieces, and the entire tiara was packed with more than 400 diamonds. One of the tiara's first appearances at a major royal occasion came a few years later, when Alexandra wore the diadem at the 1893 wedding of her second son, the Duke of York, later King George V, and Princess Mary of Tech. In portraits taken on that day, the flexibility of the tiara is apparent, the fringes are not bunched tightly together, and spaces are visible between the bars. 
Alexandru appears to have used another jewel, possibly a bracelet, to help gather the fringe together. When Queen Alexandra died in 1925, the Kokoshenik was inherited by her daughter-in-law, Queen Mary. A fitting choice, since it was famously worn by Alexandru at Mary's wedding. Queen Mary died in 1953, and along with most of the rest of her property, she bequeathed the tiara to her granddaughter, Queen Elizabeth II. The piece quickly became a central part of Elizabeth's jewelry collection. There are tiaras, and then there are masterpieces. Today's tiara definitely falls into the latter category. One of the most stunning tiaras in the collections of the extended British royal family, the Fife tiara was given to Princess Louise. Princess Louise is the granddaughter of Queen Victoria and she was the eldest daughter and third child of Albert Edward, Prince of Wales, and Princess Alexandra who later became Edward VII and Queen Alexandra. The Fife tiara is made on an extremely intricate and delicate frameworks, and it contains diamonds ranging in weight from 1 to 10 carats. It was made in five pieces, and almost like one now. The tiara is extraordinary in its construction, silver in the front, gold in the back, and all of the 200 carats of diamonds, beautifully cut, while being presented in the thinness framework. But what really extraordinary is the tiny pivots in which the bear-shaped diamonds are presented, and they would have caught the light, when Louise Duchess of Fife worn it, it would be an extremely beautiful to behold. Third on the list is the Brazilian Aquamarine Tiara. Most of the sparkling tiaras worn by Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom were legacies from queens and princesses past, but a few of them have been hand-picked or commissioned by the Queen herself. Today's tiara, the Brazilian Aquamarine, was ordered by the Queen as a part of an evolving parure of jewels. The Brazilian Aquamarine parure didn't start with a tiara, it began with a necklace and a pair of earrings. These diamond and aquamarine pieces were presented to the Queen in 1953 by the Brazilian President as a coronation gift on behalf of the people of Brazil. By 1957, the Queen had also commissioned Garrett to make a tiara to match the aquamarine de May parure. The tiara featured an elaborate diamonds and aquamarine band base, with three aquamarine and diamond elements placed at intervals. The Queen has worn the tiara fairly consistently since its overhaul, even though it's now one of the tallest and most imposing diadems in her collection. The last time we saw her wear the tiara in public was during the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Australia in October 2011. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert's shared love of art and design resulted in many an exquisite treasure, including jewels like her sapphire coronet and the oriental circlet. Albert has such taste and arranges everything for me about my jewels, Victoria wrote. This Gothic-inspired emerald and diamond tiara is another example, a piece personally designed by Prince Albert and commissioned in 1845 from the London jeweller Joseph Kitching for £1,150. The tiara, nearly a full circlet in shape, has a base of cushion-shaped diamonds and step-cut emeralds topped by a graduated row of 19 inverted pear-shaped emeralds. The largest emerald weighs in at 15 carats. The tiara completed a pair of emeralds and diamonds previously gifted to the queen by her husband, including a necklace with nine clusters of emeralds surrounded by cushion-shaped diamonds, a pair of pendant earrings, and a brooch featuring a 20-carat emerald. Queen Victoria was thrilled with her emerald tiara gift referring to it as a lovely diadem of diamonds and emeralds designed by my beloved Albert and writing of her husband's wonderful taste in her journal. The family has allowed the tiara to be shown on exhibition, and, of course, 
has just now loaned it on a long-term basis to the Victoria Revealed exhibition at Kensington Palace alongside the Fife Tiara and the Fife Fringe Tiara. The rest of the Emerald Parure is also on show, ready and waiting for your admiration. It already has mine, this is one of my absolute favorite pieces. Magnificent. This unique emerald tiara was made by Harry Winston in 1958 in advance of the marriage of the Shah of Iran and Farah Deba. Much like the Nor Orlain tiara, which was made in the same time frame for the same purpose, it includes a mix of diamond colors and incorporates old stones from the Iranian crown collection. The heart-shaped pointed base is made of a row of platinum set baguette white diamonds which sit underneath a double row of pink, yellow, and white diamonds. The brilliants are thought to be from the 19th century and Indian in origin, the largest two are 15 carats apiece. The top is set with seven large oval and round cup oak and emeralds which are probably from South America and were likely cut before 1738, when Nadia Shah invaded India. The emeralds range in size from 10 carats each, for the two smallest, to 65 carats, for the large central stone and are framed in diamonds thought to be from South Africa. The tiara may have been a signature piece for the Empress, but it belonged to the Crown Jewel collection and as such did not come with her when the Imperial family fled the country in 1979. While they are no longer worn, the jewels are safe and sound and available for public viewing at the Treasury of National Jewels in the Central Bank of the Islamic Republic of Iran in Tehran. I hope you had a wonderful time viewing some of the most beautiful tiaras made for the royalties, nobles, and pageantry. It was a pleasure. Have a wonderful day.